All right, so we're gonna be looking at cameras. There's obviously a lot to think about when it comes to cameras. Cameras come in all different shapes and sizes. They come with lots of different features. And uh, every seems like every week they're coming out with a new camera. So there's two different types of cameras that we're going to be looking at mostly in this course. Uh, the first one, and what I'll probably spend most of my time looking at, is uh, a digital SLR camera, which is the standard right now. Um, the Canon 60D and the Canon 5D Mark III are two different cameras that I use quite often. And I'm beginning to even phase out my Canon 60D and make room for the Canon 6Ds, which is um, closer to the 5D in, in features. Um, the main difference between these cameras um, are basically the sensor and some other little features. Um, they all come with a ton of features and they're super useful. Um, and even my 60D, I could get by doing pretty much everything with this 60D. A uh, couple of other cameras that I use often, um, like I said, the 6D, which is what I'm recording this video with right now, the camera that is pointing at me is a 6D, and the camera that is viewed from above that you can see all of these cameras down here below is the Canon Digital Rebel T4i, which is a fantastic camera, almost the exact same as the Canon 60D is. The Canon 60D just has a little bit beefier of a body and some extra features, and I like the layout of the buttons on the Canon 60D over the Canon T4i. Um, a lot of these cameras, to remain small, are taking advantage of menu, uh, touchscreen menus, and uh, getting rid of buttons so that it has more room uh, to make the body smaller on the camera. Um, so touchscreen interface and stuff like that are things that are coming. Um, I, tech, I like to have uh, tactile buttons, something that I can touch. For example, on my camera here, I have all of my buttons laid out here and, and I could fit and get to them with my thumb really easily. And then buttons up top here that I can get to with my index finger and I can make my adjustments quickly. Whereas if I had a touch screen, it would be a little bit longer of a process for me to make my adjustments to go through the touch screen and actually, you know, drag a slider or something like that with my finger. It's going to take more time. Um, and that's the case with, with my um, EOS M, my mirrorless camera. All the menu and everything is pretty much touch screen. So I got to drag sliders around and do all that stuff. There's no way that I could be, you know, taking a picture, even if I had the viewfinder on here, there's no way I could be taking a picture and dragging sliders at the same time. It would be a little too challenging. So for me, having the buttons is a good thing, and you can still get those on these DSLR cameras um, as long as you're okay with it being a little bit beefier of a camera because obviously it takes more room for those buttons. Uh, you know, got to have a bigger camera. So, um, Obviously, the camera that you choose, um, if you're using a camera for, you know, taking pictures of ki your kids and traveling and stuff like that, you're going to want something that's smaller and compact. Um, as opposed to if you're doing it for a profession, having a bigger camera isn't that big of a deal because um, you're there for a purpose to take pictures. And um, as long as it's not too bulky, like this is a pretty big camera, um, my Canon 5D Mark three with uh, my zoom lens, my 70 to 200 lens on it. Um, this gets kind of heavy throughout the day if I'm shooting a wedding. And so um, at the same time, it's nice to have a little bit of weight to it um, because it helps with shakiness. Um, sometimes if you have something that's too lightweight, you tend to be a little shakier with it. Um, so this is a good weight for me, but it's an, it is a heavy camera for, for, smaller, for smaller people or uh, people who don't want to carry around that much weight all day. Um, I can get almost as good of a photo out of a camera like this, um, which is extremely small and takes a fantastic photo. So it really just depends on what you're going to be using your camera for. I got this so that I'd have something lightweight and mobile that I could take with me. Um, this flash pops right off so it becomes really small and if I put the smaller lens on this camera, this camera becomes extremely compact um, and very powerful to take fantastic photos. Um, of course there's even smaller cameras, point and shoot cameras that are all contained in one. The lens pops out of it instead of the lens being removable like it is on this camera. Um, and those cameras are very powerful too. They're getting much better. Every day they're coming out with a new camera. 
that's much better than the ones were before. So um, when, you, when it comes to choosing a camera, I say look at what you're going to be doing with it and how mobile you want to be and look at the features because some of these cameras do offer uh, different features than others. Um, I couldn't shoot as well at a wedding in low light situations um, you know, with this camera as I could with my Canon 5D Mark III, which is extremely good in low light situations. Um, focuses well in low light situations um, because you know during wedding receptions it's usually darker and there are situations where my camera really needs to work well in low light situations. Uh, whereas the smaller compact cameras don't do as well in low light situations. Um, they may be okay as far as image quality but focusing may be a little bit more difficult. And it's all sacrifice because of size. It's just like with computers, you know, they've got these really small laptops these days that are super tiny, but they're not as powerful as a bigger, heavier computer because there's more room for processing components in there. And it's the same thing with cameras. These are small computers that process information, and the smaller that they become, the more challenging it is for them to do complex tasks. So think about it when it comes to buying a camera. If you already own your camera, you can make the most out of the camera that you have. Um, I always tell everybody that with a, uh, a camera, buy your good lenses first. Spend more money on your lenses before you upgrade your camera. If you have a Canon Digital Rebel like a T4i or a T3i or even an older model, hang on to that and buy a good lens first. You'd be surprised if you spent you know, five, six hundred dollars or even more on a lens instead of spending five or six hundred dollars or more on another camera, the, uh, the image quality will increase drastically. Um, in the next video, we're going to talk about lenses and some different lens options and some different features that come on lenses so you know what to look for when you decide to shop for lenses or you even know what to look for on your own lenses that you might already own. So um, we've taken a look at cameras, kind of a couple of different types of cameras, um, talked about buttons and features and, and size of cameras and all that stuff. In the next video, we're going to talk about lenses and some of those options.